Hey guys, welcome back to the show. This is Super Film Support. Um, it is sponsored by Camera Store as always. And today we have a question by someone, uh, I think from the Netherlands called, and I'm gonna screw his name big time. Uh, yeah, the Netherlands. Uh, Thix, Thix, I can't say, it. I'm very sorry. T-H-I-J-S. Uh, so he's telling me that he's getting himself into architecture photography, that he uh, often shoots a Mamiya RZ like the one I have here. Um, if I've ever considered the 75 millimeter shift lens, for the Mamiya RZ, and if so, what are your thoughts on it? I am shooting a lot of architecture on my RZ A6 7 at the moment, and I wonder if a shift lens would be a good option, or if it should just make the jump to a 4x5 and have all the movements I desire. I like the 120 workflow for developing and scanning, and I fear the 4x5 processing, developing, and scanning will be significantly more time consuming. So, uh, I've been there, I am there, and I can answer you very well. Uh, this was actually a pretty cool, um, you know, questionnaire that he sent me because I actually have all of it and I want to give you my impressions. I love the Mamiya RZ. It's probably my favorite by far medium format camera. <clears throat> it does everything I need uh, for certain things, okay? And one of the things, I had the same thing as you. I was like, architecture is my favorite subject to shoot even though I haven't shot enough. I have a couple of videos down the line, but I was like, what could I do with my medium format and some movements because a four by five and the film and all these things are so uh, big and expensive and you know the developing and scanning workflow is sometimes a little too much and I saw a shift lens and I was like oh that would be a great option for me so I went ahead and I bought it um, it wasn't too expensive these shift lenses don't run you you know dry I think they're around 400 euros maybe total camera store has a couple if you want to check them out and they have them pretty affordable <laughs> But um, the downsides of the shift lens, first thing you're seeing here, okay? This is a four x five Chamonix F1 camera. It's on a little tripod base, so uh, it's a little higher, but it's basically the size and the weight of a four x five. Okay, you can see how chunky this is. I mean, compare it to my head if you want. This is easily over a kilo lens, okay? Kilogram, uh, if you're in the States, I think it's 2.2, no, one pound is 2.2 kilos, so I don't know how much that would be in uh, US, but one kilo, okay? So one liter of water is one kilo. So that is how big it is, first problem, huge. Second problem, once you mount it on your camera, it becomes even bigger because of course the Mamiya is not a small lens. Uh, let me see if I can, do what I want to do, which is take the, there we go. Take the lens cap off. Let me take the 110 millimeter lens here, put it downwards and cover the element. And now I'm going to put it into the camera. So let me go there. It's so big that it makes it rock forward. Okay. You can see the size of this thing right now. I'm going to put it on the back no bellows extended look at the size comparison it's huge and uh one of the problems about being so big is that it takes a lot of space you need a hefty tripod because the tripod mount is on the body and when you put it there the balance i can't let go but if i let go you can see the balance is way on the lens so hefty tripod mount it's a 75 millimeter shift only no tilt only shift which means, of course, I can set it up here. And as you can see it, it's shifting that way. So there we go. And then you can shift it all the way to the other side. One thing it does, it breaks cable releases. Okay, there's a little accessory that I do own, and I show it one day when I make a review on this lens, that goes here and makes your cable release go backwards, because if it's popping out when you do certain movements, it'll break it. Then you can do movements of 30 degrees or 15 degrees. I think it's 10 degrees, yeah. 10, 30, 10, zero, minus 10, minus 20, minus 30. So you can do all the movements in the circle. So you can do not only shifting vertical or horizontal, you can do it in little increments, which is fairly nice. Um, it's kind of slow. You have to cock the shutter and shoot the lens every single time independently because they're not connected, of course, because of those movements. So it's not the smallest thing. Then the 75 doesn't have the widest perspective. So when you're shooting on a large format, four by five, usually a 90 millimeter lens is the universal, you know, 
architectural kind of lens, then you can go wider, you can go higher, but usually 90 is a very good middle ground. Uh, this is 75 on a six by seven, so it's longer. It's, it's slightly wide, but it's not that wide. So you're gonna, you know, sometimes be like have to back up and back up a little more and then back up a little more. And then the shift is not that much, but there's the huge benefit of roll film. As you said in your email, 120 film is easy to scan. You get a lot of frames per roll and all this. What is the compromise? Should you get this or should you invest yourself on a four by five and shoot that? Well, my suggestion is maybe best of both worlds, which is a four by five wide lenses. And I'm saying you can get a 75 for uh, a four by five for pretty cheap and then use roll film backs. Okay. And what does that mean? That means that, let me remove this from the camera. That means that they sell, not my media backs, but they sell backs that go onto your four x five that will shoot six by seven, six by nine, six by 12, some even six by six, I think, and six by four five. But six by seven is a great compromise. What happens is, and let me remove the four x five ground glass. Of course, every time you use a uh, six by seven lens, I mean, six by seven back on a four x five, you see the size difference. So you've got a lot more space to do movements on whatever lens you shoot. Uh, you can use 75 lenses that don't have a lot of circle because they all don't have a lot of circle except for the 72 Schneider XL. And you can move quite a bit. You're getting the center of the lens, which is supposedly always the best part of the lens. Um, you do have that 75, you can go wider, 65, 58, 47 XL, and still have quite a bit of movement. You're getting all the shots per roll, so 10 shots on a six by seven, and you're not having to pay four by five film. Slide film, color film is really expensive here in Europe, especially, and you're getting that, you know, six by seven negative. The lenses on um, large format are not meant to resolve so much detail on a six by seven because they're meant to be in a big chunk of film, but I hardly think you have an issue shooting uh, on a six by seven back on a four by five lens or a large format lens. So to me, that's the best compromise. I do think that the 75 has its place. I even have the ground glass back for the RZ, which I've never used because it just turns into this massive large format kind of camera or technical medium format camera. So I suggest something like a four by five, get something inexpensive, don't go crazy. Uh, if you want to do architecture, maybe an Intrepid might be a little bit too, you know, flimsy for certain things because it, it does work if you know what you're doing. But if you don't know, maybe you'll get, you know, certain shifts or movements that you didn't want tilts sometimes. So get something that's, you know, pretty sturdy. I recommend, for example, the Graflex. And I know, I know, Graflex and wide lenses are not the best thing. But the Graflex with a 90 works very well. It doesn't have all the movements in the world, but it does do quite a bit of them. Uh, 65 can still be used if you drop the bed and uh, very, very little movements because the lens is so close to the body of the, you know, the box of a Graflex. If not, you can get a certain, you know, Vista, uh, Toyo, many other cameras that are under the thousand euros, probably 800, 700 euros that will do that. If you really want the best of both worlds, Cinar F2 is amazing and you can get bag bellows and do all the movements in the world. The backs for six by seven, I highly recommend you check the Horseman six by seven backs. I'm gonna leave links to all of this in the description if you wanna find it easier, because there's backs that work and backs that don't work. The ones that will work on six by seven for four by fives are like a film back and then they have a bit of a flap, okay, to cover the size difference between the film on this and the film on this. If it only has the six by seven sort of size, that means it's made for uh, six by nine field cameras, like the Horseman VHR and such. Do I recommend those? Not so much. They're kind of a pain to focus and whatnot. It, I, don't, I don't like them. And I do have one, which I should have brought up here. So yeah, you wanna do get a camera that has a graph lock back, which means you can remove the ground glass and put those film holders on, uh, roll film holders on your camera. But uh, that is what happened to me. I do have this. I've shot with it a couple of times. I will be making a review on the 75 shift if you want to wait for it. But uh, I don't suggest. Another thing is look at the element on the front. This thing is humongous. I can't even remember how big it is. But that's a 90 millimeter lens. And that's the 
75. It's a 4.5 lens, which isn't too dark, but is fairly good for movement. But yeah, I suggest that uh, you might want to look into that, uh, maybe a large format, and you always have the option of shooting a 4x5 film, which to me is amazing. It doesn't have to be so expensive. You can shoot Foma Pan 100 is great film and inexpensive. You can shoot color if you buy it, you know, sometimes in the US, if you have someone going over, it's cheaper there. Self-develop it at home. But yeah, for me, it's that. This thing is just amazing but it's so big and so bulky the weight of this total system is well over four kilos i think and this with a lens is around a little less than two kilos so best of both worlds large format camera medium format rollback and you're good to shoot so yeah if you have any questions i hope that i answered your uh question you can send me a contact form to superfilmsupport.com and I'll try my best to answer whatever doubts, questions, problems you're having with film. Once again, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.